So welcome back. Um, in case you didn't read from the title, this is going to be a tad different than what I usually do, but this is just going to be a video talking about my uh, mobile office build slash, I guess, camper build because you can sleep in it. Uh, but needless to say, it's something that I, I created uh, in my garage uh, just so it could help me with my work as well as relaxing. Um, why I built this really was during COVID, I found myself kind of confined to my office space, my home office space more so since the job shut down and everything became telework. Um, I don't like to expend that much time in here. So I kind of wanted to break up the monotony and go somewhere else to do a lot of the, the video stuff and the photo editing type stuff. Uh, but I didn't have anywhere to go. Sometimes I used to do that type of stuff in the coffee shop. They were all closed down. So I really just wanted to create another space so I can go out do my editing, you know, shoot, and then also use it as a hangout area when I'm out and about, whether I'm running or after my runs or hiking or biking or whatever, and then camping. So that's kind of what it is, and that's what I built it to be. Uh, the biggest thing for me is I wanted something where I wasn't permanently um, altering the van. So I wanted something that I could put in as one unit, take out as one unit, and that's the reason why I went with the ca our camper box. Uh, camper box, if you're not familiar with that terminology, it's basically just a piece of furniture that generally I see them overseas, like in Europe, but you buy them and they're specific for the vehicle, but you can slide them in, do all your stuff, and then you can slide them back out. And they generally convert into like an eating area, um, sleeping area, etc. There's not a whole lot of those types of products in the States, but I did find a couple. Uh, but once again, I started kind of looking at the prices of those and I was like, well, let me see if I can do it myself. Because once again, I wanted it to be custom too. So... <clears throat> Moving right along, my initial plan was to design it all and then to have a carpenter build it for me. So at first, I started out filling this book up with a bunch of drawings and just all kinds of stuff. And when I started looking at it, once I was, you know, happy with it, I realized that I couldn't really give this to the carpenter because, you know, it's my chicken scratch. It makes sense to me. It may not make sense to him. So I decided, uh, you know, I would have to find another way to present it to him. So what I ended up doing is I created it in SketchUp, and we'll talk about the design shortly. But uh, needless to say, uh, whenever I gave it to him, you know, he didn't really ask me for a budget. He just pretty much, we sat down and we talked, and he kind of told me, or I told him what I was looking for. And then, you know, it took about a week or two, got back with me, and told me the labor was going to be like a thousand bucks. Now, keep in mind, when I was building this, in my mind, because I knew what the materials were going to run, I personally didn't want to spend more than like 500 bucks to build everything. And I'm talking about just the woodwork alone, not all the other stuff that I did. Uh, so with a thousand bucks just for the labor, that was already over what I was going to spend. And I still had to go out and get materials. Uh, so I was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and try this myself. Now, I hadn't d did like woodwork in ages, you know, like since the 90s in high school. So I knew I was going to have to take my time and learn a few things, but that was okay. Um, moving right along to the design, what ended up happening was I took my drawings and then I converted them to SketchUp and that's what I gave to the carpenter. And even when I decided to do it myself, I still use SketchUp somewhat. So I, I have the frame, which by the way, the frame wasn't my idea. It was an individual I was talking to over in a Home Depot and I mentioned to him what I was doing. And at first I was just going to get some three quarter inch pine and, uh, plywood and then just kind of basically screw it together but then i decided actually after talking to him he's like you know what a better idea would probably be to just do a frame first and it would make your life a lot easier so i did that i'm glad that i did because it actually did uh and we'll talk about the materials that i use once i get to that section but i still used sketchup i didn't rely on sketchup as much i was really sticking more with my drawings since this is how i work and i understand these these measurements and i can keep this book with me when I went to the stores to buy different materials, uh, the cost, I'm just going to say up front, I ended up coming in at about $517 total. Now, keep in mind, that was all the woodwork. That was the, you know, the screws, you know, the hinges. Um, shoot. The only thing that doesn't include is the battery that I end up buying, which was a solar generator. It was a LiPo 4 solar generator. And then also the Steelworks pipe fittings that I used to make my Lagoon um table but other than that everything else was covered and jumping right to materials the materials that i used um you know and i'm pretty certain i'm leaving something out here like i don't think i really get into the screws and stuff like that but uh i i used about two 
four by eight or eight by four uh, sheets of ACX pine plywood. And I'm really going to talk about that one because at first I didn't know how I was going to finish the project, whether I was going to stain and, and coat or paint. But then I figured if I get ACX and then I get the sanded side and I get the side that's ready for the outside, I kind of have options. Um, but then, of course, I ended up doing something completely different. Um, the framing was the other thing that, frankly, it would have cost me less if I hadn't messed this up to begin with. But I used a 2x2 two two Redwood or Redwood Deck Lumber, which I actually got from, uh, I think it was Home Depot. No, no, it was Lowe's. Uh, ended up getting like eight of those, and they were more than enough. But like I said, I, I ended up jacking up the measurements in the very beginning, so I had to go get a couple extra like recut. Uh, I bought vinyl uh, taupe fabric, which was actually waterproof, and I bought that for that reason when I realized that, hey, I don't want to stain this thing. I figured I'd coat the plywood in the vinyl, so that's what I did. Uh, uh, decorative fabric as well as the foam I actually bought because I made my own cushions. Uh, cushions were really pretty much straightforward, easy to put together. Uh, what I ended up doing is I, I bought some uh, some cheap backing, uh, paneling really. It's like $9 a sheet. I don't think I have that on here, but I used that as the backing for the cushions. And then I cut the fabric. Um, I used the fabric, uh, oh gosh, adhesive spray to attach the fabric to the two inch foam that I actually purchased from Amazon. And then I uh, used batting as well, just to make sure I'm not wearing the material down. And then I used staples actually to staple into the backing uh, to wrap the fabric. And it appears to be holding so far. Seems like it's actually pretty heavy duty, but we'll see. Um, I did all the wiring. The wiring, you know, it wasn't really a whole lot of wire since, once again, I kind of changed my mind when I bought the solar generator. Because at first when I was thinking about this thing, I was just going to get some LiPo4 cells, uh, probably from Alibaba or some other place, uh, super cheap, and just make my own system. But then when they started putting them in the, the LiPo4s versus the lithium ion inside of the uh, solar generators, to me it was a no-brainer because that's one less thing I had to worry about doing. Um Let's see, got some wrist straps on there. And then there was various other items like vinyl flooring, some uh, some carpet that I had, like really cheap carpet. I bought that from like Walmart. No, actually that was on clearance at Amazon for like $9 a box. And then uh, some gas struts that came in a pack of six. Uh, they hold about 100 newton meters or they put up about 100 newton meters uh, or 22 pounds uh gas struts lift support so i used that because i knew i was going to be lifting up uh fairly sizable uh openings because they are the uh the like i said three and a quarter inch uh, plywood so it appears to be working fine and then on the side of the box i actually have some uh spring-loaded handles and that's just so when we take it out it makes it so much easier to just put it up on a sawhorse when you have something you can grab and you're not jamming your fingers uh, as far as tools are concerned, very minimal. I used uh, a jigsaw, a 20-volt drill. Those are the only tools that I really bought for this. Oh, and the electric staple and brad gun. Um, so really cheap here. And then the panel saw at various stores. So if I could get them to cut something so I didn't have to come home and cut it, uh, that's what I would do. So, yeah, it worked out fine. And then... Um, yeah, then I just set out putting this thing together. Uh, I went in the process, I should say, I went in steps. And the steps pretty much just were laid out in the process I just covered where I hit the framing first. And then once I got the framing squared away, I did all the paneling. Um, I had various ideas that came along as I went. So like things like that steel works, the lagoon table, that's something I just had to think of. I actually had an additional attachment towards the, the back that uh, I can take the table out because it's attached with a, a quarter uh, hex or Allen and I can actually move it so I can have an outside table with that exact same table um, and then once again when I got that finished the next thing I did was I, I coated it with the vinyl material and then at the same time I was building my uh, or I should say I was doing the cushions inside the house because that was like the dead of winter so it was super cold so I tried to move that part inside uh, and then finally the last thing that I did really was the electrical uh, stuff and like I said, what I ended up doing is I bought the uh, Bibney uh, CN five zero five, which is the Ocotel 
also branded uh, solar generator, and it's about 614 watt hours. It has all the connections I need, and it runs off the solar panel, which I put in probably like two years ago. Uh, that's on top of my vehicle. Uh, the solar panel, thankfully, is a 100 watt solar panel. The charge rate that I actually get with that device is very close. So I'm seeing right about 90 watts. Um, and then I bought a refrigerator, which is the Indel B uh, TV18 that's in the middle of my second row. So it fits like perfectly. Uh, also, if you look at the back of the second row seats, you'll see some cushions up there. Those cushions were the only thing that I did not make. Uh, the, the ones on the top are uh, just memory foam cushions I ordered off of eBay. And the ones on the bottom are these really cheap uh, kitchen like cushions that I found in Amazon. So those two together actually make the perfect combination. So when I rest my back there, it feels just right. And then uh, inside of the box, I actually have some cutouts because I have the box strapped down to the third row anchors. So the box doesn't go anywhere. I've got like two straps there. Uh, there are little knickknacks and stuff that I put in the box and I'll probably change it and update it as I go just to see what works, what doesn't work. But so far I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I think that's it. So like I said, made it with uh, a budget of around 500 bucks, uh, minimal woodworking skills only because I haven't done it in so long. And I did it in my garage, uh, with really in my possession about three tools. Cause I, like I said, the electric, the electric staple Brad gun, I actually bought that because I had a different hand staple gun and it was terrible. So I bought that one and it was perfect. And then the drill was just a uh, 20 volt uh, Black & Decker drill. Nothing fancy. Maybe 50 bucks. Uh, the jigsaw was the cheapest Black & Decker jigsaw that they had in the store. It was like $29. So not a whole heck of a lot. Didn't break the bank. And overall, I think it came out pretty good. So if you have any questions, feel free. Leave them down below. Uh, click like, subscribe, and I think that's it. So Agent Fit signing out.